Hello, this is Jonathan Beal uh, with Saratoto Copper. We're here in my kitchen, uh, and as you might see, I've got copper pretty much everywhere, as I do enjoy, um, and most people do. Copper's been a part of the human hearth and kitchen for thousands of years, and there's a great reason for it. One of those reasons is eggs. Yes, which came first, the chicken or the egg? It doesn't matter because with copper you can cook up both the chicken and the egg and you don't even have to argue about which came first. Specifically one of the things are our copper mixing bowls. Um, we make a four quart, six quart, and an eight quart mixing bowl. These are my personal bowls. You can see how they're starting to get a nice patina on here. Real nice color. Um, all this hammered, uh, the hammered copper. Um, just with time and use. We don't put any kind of lacquer or finish on here because these pieces are made to be used. Anything you're going to put on your copper is going to end up wearing off eventually as you're using it. Um, so we don't put anything on it. And, uh, one thing about our pieces is we have these really nice handles that we put on here. This is our four quart. It's about a uh, six inch, no this is an eight inch diameter. This is a ten inch diameter. Uh, six quart and this is a 12 inch diameter eight quart eight quart of mixing you can mix up a lot of eggs a lot of pancake batter a lot of anything in here. I originally made this with a little ring that it hung on and I happened to make a trip over to uh, France to Normandy um, and in Normandy is the oldest omelet house in France called Madame Poulard's and they make a lot of omelets and uh, their omelets are the fluffiest things you've ever seen. And one thing I noticed about their big copper mixing bowls is all of their mixing bowls were set up with a real solid handle on there. Okay, so uh, one of the questions we get a lot is why do we have a completely rounded bottom on this piece? Man, that's a solid piece. It's heavy. It's thick. We use a real thick gauge copper. Um, we do a rounded bottom on here because this is designed for getting the optimum whisking and mixing and beating, whether you're doing mer eggs for meringue or you're making a, a meringue Swiss buttercream icing, or you're doing a pancake batter, or you're doing waffle mix, or you're making some bread, whatever you're doing in here. Um, you, want, you don't want any edges where anything catches, and you can just mix all of that up. Um, this one thing is, yeah, it moves around a little bit. It's not going to fall over, but the trick, this is the professional's trick here that we saw over there in France and Normandy at Madame Poulard's, is basically you make a little donut that this all sits on. Nice little hat there. Set this down. Boom. There you go. Now you can get busy. This is not going anywhere. And it's a little base for this, just a wound up uh, uh, dish towel. Works great. Another thing that's really important about why you want to use a copper mixing bowl specifically has to do with the dilemma of the chicken and the egg. Really, only the egg. Um, and one of the things about copper um, and eggs is that there's a protein in egg whites, I think it's, I'm not sure if it's called albumin, um, but this protein has a very special relationship and interaction with copper. That protein that's in the egg white, um, for some reason the interaction with copper allows that protein to be more elastic and it gives it more strength. So as you're whipping it up and you're trying to whip up uh, whip up a meringue, whip up some kind of icing, whip up a nice big fluffy omelet. Um, what it's doing, what it's doing in that interaction with the copper is that the protein is becoming um, stronger and it's becoming more elastic and it allows it to, as you're whipping it up and what you're doing is you're trying to bring more air in there and stretch those proteins out so you get fl more fluff, more peak and specifically when you're doing that with copper is it gives that elasticity more strength so it doesn't break you don't lose your peaks you don't turn your uh, meringue into liquid if some you add some other fats in there like butter if you're making an icing um, or if you're you know wanting to dump your fluffy egg into a, a pan filled with butter so you can fry up a nice big thick omelet and that's one of the special applications of copper for a mixing bowl and why you want to use copper when you're mixing up things like that Get 
you can see how much that mixing bowl gets whipped up and we just keep whipping things up inside there. Been using this one for about a year now. And it's holding up well. I, um, I mean, it just, here, here you can really see a lot of the color that's coming out. You can see a lot of that pink and that purple shine. Um, and I typically will give it, if I'm about to mix something up, I might rub it down with a little lemon juice or something so that you've got the bare copper in there when you're starting to mix it up. Uh, mix it up. And one thing you can do also is dry your goods completely before you put them away. That way you avoid the water spotting. Um, that spotting comes about because of the chemicals they put in your tap water to make it potable or to keep it potable, which is typically some kind of chlorine compound. Four quart, this is an eight inch diameter. We have the six quart, this is a 10 inch diameter. And we have the eight quart, which is a 12 inch diameter pan. You can see these from my personal collection. Four quart, six quart, eight quart, 12 inch, 10 inch, eight inch diameter. Nice little patina these are getting with the use and time. We use these quite a bit.